PlayStation's Gran Turismo 7 is undeniably an incredible looking game, no matter the display, but I couldn't help wondering what it would be like to play it on the big screen in an actual movie theater. So I rented out the biggest and best screen in a modern cinema, and it is now time to share that experience with you. Upon arriving at the cinema with the console, we got to go upstairs and behind the scenes to the projector rooms, plugging the PS5 right beneath the projector. This corridor was honestly quite dark, so it was mainly the lights from the projectors lighting up the room. We're just seeing what happens up here to make this place work was genuinely so interesting and cool so i'm really glad i can share that with all of you watching and i hope you think the same anyways with the ps5 plugged in it was time to play some gran turismo 7 on the big screen so a very excited me walked back through the screening corridor and straight into screen one initial impressions were that yeah the screen that it is being played on is so huge and everything on it looks incredible i was in disbelief i was playing in a cinema for ages and i think i still am in disbelief that i actually got to do this speaking of the screen and projector it's the largest supersized screen the cinema has and uses vertex 4k technology ensuring the most vivid colors sharpest picture and brightest whites based on the console's video output settings i was playing at a complete 60 hertz at full 4k or 2160p albeit with hdr disabled that said i would not be surprised if the display was capped out at 48 hertz with it being currently configured to show films though even if this was the case we all agreed that the experience felt silky smooth and was indistinguishable from 60 fps Yes. In fact, after doing a tad bit of research on the projector, it should even be able to reach a full 120 FPS at 4K, so I assume it just didn't reach that as it was set up in cinema mode, which is conventionally going to be a 24 or 48 hertz output. Screen 1 in this particular cinema has a total of 154 seats made up of recliners, rockers and even sofa seats, so it's a sizable room and is always a screen used to premiere new releases to mass audiences such as the new Batman film. I actually ended up watching watching that on the same day on the same screen, so not gonna lie, it felt quite cool being back in there, knowing we had the room just to ourselves, only a few hours prior. As this is a proper cinema room of course, it obviously has the best sound quality around too, with a ridiculous number of Dolby Atmos speakers on all four walls, as well as even in the ceiling. In the PS5 sound settings, this caps out a 7.1 channel surround system with a Dolby output, and I left the speakers in the default 7.1 configuration, assuming that the other speakers would do the rest of the work anyway, which we did seem to and it sounded insane. More on that later. Oh, and on the topic of PS5 settings, I have some great videos on what you need to change right now, so watch those after this one. Going back to Gran Turismo 7, just look at this. It's hard to demonstrate the true experience on a video, but being here in person and playing GT7 on this screen was truly just so amazing, like I'm speechless. What you are seeing now though is actually my older brother playing whilst I film, so you can blame any crashing on him in the comments. Please do that. We were doing this the day straight after GT7 release 2, so I hadn't unlocked all the tracks or got any ridiculously fast cars yet, but that didn't matter too much, as the tracks we did have access to still looked great on the big screen. We both like to play with manual gears on as well, as it adds an extra challenge and makes the gameplay more interesting. To add further to this immersion, we use this modded dual sense with back paddles to go up and down gears instead of square and cross. This paddle attachment is only $35, and I recently did a full video on it, which you should watch later in addition to maybe picking one up for yourself. So you might be thinking now that this is as immersive as it gets, but no, I still haven't even mentioned how much of an improvement the haptics and adaptive triggers of a PS5 DualSense make. Specifically, the triggers really feel like pedals in a car, and if you ever go over a bump on the track or hit the curb, you really feel it in that exact part of the controller. You just have to try it to be able to appreciate it. As I mentioned earlier, it is really hard to show what the screen actually looks like on a video, so just trust me when I say all the colours were great and it was immensely sharp. The only real problem with it was that when the lights were turned on dim so that we could film the room in decent quality, these awesome side red lights leaked red onto the screen which caused both colour and exposure problems. That said, lights can of course be turned off, so for the next hour we played with the red lights completely off and just with the ceiling lights on for a minimal amount of light. As you can see, that issue on the side of the screen with the red is now completely gone, allowing for the most immersive and cinematic experience possible on a PlayStation 5 console, which is just so awesome to be able to see. When we then dimmed even more of the ceiling lights, I sat down myself to have a couple of races, also using manual gears. I really wanted to know how a track at night and in rain would hold up on a projector like this, and both situations did in fact look spectacular, as you would probably expect. Oh, and another cool little thing is that you could see the projector coming through the window with the gameplay shining backwards on it. I just thought
thought that was kind of cool when I noticed it. As we were yet to unlock anything overtly fancy in the game, I put myself into one of the first few races in the main campaign with a Mini Cooper, starting towards the back. Just watching some of this race, if I play the audio as well, you should be able to get an idea for how great the sound quality was here. Know that all this audio has been picked up by just a built-in mic on my camera too, so it's not even going to sound anywhere near as good as it should. After just a couple laps, I was of course able to overtake my opponents and then bring that win home at the end of lap 3 relatively easily. Once I finished that race, I was quite curious to see how good the 4k ray trace replay of it looked and yeah, just as expected, it looked basically lifelike. I wish I had in fact filmed these parts with my other lens though and kept more of a cinema in frame to better demonstrate my own experience, but I know for next time now. Well, that's if there is a next time, so to ensure I do this again with future games like God of War Ragnarok and Spider-Man 2, drop a like on this video and share it with some of your friends. I genuinely really appreciate it. I did also have a brief play in escapes mode with my Tesla Model S, and again, it's ridiculous how good Gran Turismo looks these days, never mind in an actual cinema. Like, compare this to the original games, and it's just crazy how much we've come in only 25 years. Before then driving into another race before our cinema got taken over with Batman fans, I wanted to give a couple other games a quick try too, so I booted up Spider-Man Remastered and played the opening mission. Now with Spider-Man here, I actually think it was the cinema level speakers that made it so epic, rather than just a huge screen, though that obviously helps a ton with that. Like, ah, the music for this game is just so good. I did give both Miles Morales and Horizon Forbidden West a quick go as well, just to see how they looked, and I do think it would be awesome to start doing a let's play of the opening two hours of PlayStation exclusives in an actual cinema. So let me know in the comments if you want to see me do that with future releases or not. Back to Gran Turismo, I just had one last race on this nice Italian track in daylight, and in a pretty fast Porsche, which you get as a pre-order bonus. Again, this track looked especially nice in the cinema, thanks to the mountains you can see in the distance. Though, to be honest, that clearly distracted me as I ended up spinning off and rage quitting. Though, we did have to leave anyway to make room for the first Batman showing of the day, so that was it, and the PS5 had to be turned off. Overall then, getting to play Gran Turismo in the cinema and just PlayStation in general is without a doubt one of the greatest gaming experiences I've ever had, so thank you so much to Savoy Cinemas for allowing me to do this and filming there too. If you do want me to do this again with future games, but instead focusing on the let's play style aspect in the cinema, then like the video and share it around so it can get more attention. Just to summarise, the sound quality was through the roof and the visuals of the big screen were unbelievable, with my only criticism being that projectors are just unable to display true blacks like OLED screens can. So if you want the best experience of GT7 possible at home, without needing to hire out a cinema like I have here, I would therefore recommend something like the LG C1, which I'll leave links to in the description. I'd also encourage you to check out that $35 back paddle attachment I mentioned earlier on for switching gears in Gran Turismo or just for extra inputs in other games. You can do so by watching the video on screen now. Oh, and if you do watch that, you're going to be entered into a giveaway for it as well. So what are you waiting for? Watch it now.